minimal, but to adding the pieces or getting everything together with the quick release. That's what I was talking about. The quick release. The quick release was easier to deal with at this point because I didn't like the way the flaps were flipping around and the sagginess of the side of the car and the way the bumper looked and the whole front of the car looked. It was a process taking it on and off all those times, off and on all those times. But in the end, I am glad that I did decide to go this particular route because now it's easier for me to just jump in there take off a couple of screws and hit the pins on hit the buttons on the side of the car uh, side of the bumper and it's done and with the splitter in place uh with the splitter rods that was an issue i ran into with splitter rod placement i have to figure out what looks right because at, at one point once all the fasteners are able to be put in place or uh screws and uh lock nuts uh, bolts and lock nuts. I'll actually put some use those instead of using screws. I like that method because it feels more secure, especially with Loctite onto the vehicle. Excuse me, on the screws. Uh, especially when it came to taking it apart. I also started writing the size of the hardware that I'm using so when i go to my toolbox i already know you know once i get there i can look down and see okay this is what's on the car eventually i plan to do a a schematic and get everything to 10 millimeter also having that quick release in the front i always imagine that one day i'll ride up on somebody that has one of those 07 bumpers at a junkyard and you go hey i'll trade with you and i would definitely take it in an rv but that's pretty much everything for the front bumper at this point. Um, I do plan to get it painted here. I don't want to do it this year because it's everything else I still need to do. And also I found some, I have some ideas I may want to try out that I need to talk to the body guy about as far as the front bumper is concerned with the different set of fog lights. If I want to go with a different shape, I'm not sure I've seen a couple of vehicles on Instagram that had this particular setup that inspired, you know, the ideas that I have. And also I seen something else that I thought about, but I would have to see how it fits on if I could add a bulb inside and how would that look? I'll show a picture of it. It's a, it's a fog light for the Camry or Corolla, I think, but it has this cool looking light bar on the inside of the fog light that I like and I understand that it's a form of a function thing but also on the front bumper I want to put in the headlights in the middle where the high beams are and the daytime running lights oh if anybody has a tech stream that can hook me up with disabling this DRL in the front I would greatly appreciate it. Or somebody can send me a link. I tried the Club Lex for them. I'm not going to say how far I got with that one. But just doing that search in there, I wasn't able to find it. Uh, anybody, it's just a bunch of bashing about how the... There's not a reliable copy from such and such website or something like that. Um, but I do know it's possible someone has to have it or it has to be a way to do this 2022 but i like the yellows in the front of the car when the factory lights allow the yellow in the front to be on and i feel like i like the way the yellow in the daytime running light should be a different shade of yellow and i want to be able to have a separate separate switch for my fog lights in the front and i want to swap out the fog lights in the front since I have this bumper with the L shape. I saw one on a Lexus uh, GS350, the a black one. And I think it was another color at some point, but I did a real close up on the pictures that I did find. And he actually took the route to mold it, mold or excuse me, mount it and take apart the fog light bracket that's in the front of the car. Now, taking out that 
fog light bracket, excuse me. Did you hear that? Taking out that fog light bracket, or you know, the fog light in the, uh, the whole fog light unit, excuse me. The fog light unit is not a long process. It's only one screw and a slight tug and you can just pull it on out. But I'm not sure if he did that to retain the ability to use the switch in the car or did he not want an additional switch for it? I'm not sure, but I do want a separate switch for my fog light. I want a separate switch for my the lights that I'm gonna put in the middle what the DRL is gonna be, what the DRLs are, to you know keep that yellow. Also, the base controller that I have in the car, I want to switch in there for that. But don't want to get too far from it. But wow, and all right. Utility thing in the front of me in my lane, and you call it like he didn't want to put me over. But those are some modifications I want to do to the front bumper uh, to bring the whole look in for this particular time frame. I remember I was in an old in a car club long time ago. It's called Rev Tech out of Destin, Florida. Not Destin. Um, Fort Walton Beach, out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And they, I forgot what I was saying about Rev Tech. Totally forgot. Oh, they had a rule that you had to modify a, add a modification to the car one modification per month like you had to add something and they didn't really care at the time because we were younger we were younger crowd still trying to figure out what else to do with our paychecks besides blood on our car and booze um, so that was a pretty cool rule and some people would just do little minor things so that's one of the philosophies I try to keep with the car where I try to add something each month or change something each month and I realized the aim game bumper is a big step for me because it's gonna require a lot of moving parts. And of course I have parts coming in. I have parts that I still have to order. I have material I still need to order. And with this being a DIY budget bill, so to speak, and it being an evolving process, uh, I didn't wanna try to take on too many big things and handle a lot of the smaller things first with the car. But As the bumper or the front of the car comes together, I'll be very happy once this is all complete. Because I think the fog light in the front with the LED, that would be, that'll be good for the front end. I think it'll be complete with this particular setup and I wanna put some laminex over the L-shaped LED just to keep the yellow on the front. It reminds me of like the old school instant it's a lexus in 1990s i know you understand what i mean if you go check out the 90s lexus you'll see that the yellow is like their thing or whatnot and i think it was a european thing as well but that's why i learned it at. so that is all well that's all for now and i'm going to upload and start editing today and give a update on all of the projects are all the different parts, but I just wanted to do a bumper update and there are gonna be a couple of more videos of these. I wanna start wearing my start wearing my hoodies where some of my designs in my videos to with the hoodies and I'm doing a lot of things tailored towards the three GS because of IS3 IS series Lexus, the 2GS, 4GS <laughs> Those cars are way more popular trying to find any kind of apparel or, you know, just cool looking things or whatnot to have that you 
don't find out there for the three GS models. And one of the things is the crowd that's really following this car. Like you don't, I don't want to lose them, and because I'm one of those. And it feels good to hear people say, "Hey, I didn't really like, you know, that particular body style Lexus until I saw yours." Now that makes me feel good, and that's one of the things where I'm like, "Hey." Let's keep the culture going. They're out here trying to keep a campaign going to save the manuals. Which is not a bad idea. Uh, Ford Momentum on YouTube is one of those guys that's out here saving the manuals. Big shout out to him. But I actually want to get some more gear out there. And he has a 2GS, so ain't no hate. I just really like what he's doing uh, with his vehicle. And... I like what he did. He taught me that I don't want to supercharge my V8. And because he said he lost traction control. And I'm not that responsible. I'm not going to lie. I'm not that responsible uh, to be losing traction control. So that was a big deterrent. My long-term big idea for this particular car uh, performance-wise is